Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar this afternoon on Button Up Vermont's campaign this year. Uh, we'll be getting started in just a couple of minutes to give folks some time to log on. Again, thanks again, and we'll be starting soon. Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining today's webinar uh, focused on this year's Button Up Vermont campaign. My name is Ian Hitchcock, and I am an organizer with the Vermont Natural Resources Council, which helps to coordinate VCAN, the Vermont Energy and Climate Action Network, made up of town energy committees from across Vermont. Uh, we're excited today to be joined by Becca White from Efficiency Vermont, who you'll meet in just a few minutes. Uh, and she will be walking through the bulk of today's presentation, laying out what people are thinking for this year's Button Up Vermont campaign and how community groups can get involved. Before we get to the main presentation, I wanted to just offer a few housekeeping items. So at the end of the presentation today, we will have plenty of time for folks to ask questions of Becca and myself. Uh, in order to submit a question, you can use the GoToWebinar control panel, which should be on the right side of your screen. And there is a menu for questions. If you type your questions into that, uh, we will see them as the webinar is going on. And then I will moderate a conversation with those questions as we progress to the webinar. Um, so please don't feel like you've got to wait till the end for the questions. If something comes up as you see the presentation, feel free to type it down and we will make sure to get to as many of those questions as we can. At this point, it is my pleasure to introduce Becca White, who is a community engagement manager with Efficiency Vermont. Uh, she's helping to coordinate this year's Button Up campaign. And she's gonna be walking us through today's presentation. So Becca, Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, I'm just gonna start the presentation. Cool, so I hope everyone can hear me. It's saying that you can, <laughs> so that's a good sign. Um, Ian, thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, so my name is Becca White. If we haven't met before, uh, I'm the Community Engagement Manager, brand new, two months in for Efficiency Vermont, uh, and I am spearheading the Button Up Vermont community engagement side of things. 
so this campaign, I'm going to dive into what it's going to look like for 2019. Uh, as you can see from the PowerPoint, there's this nice little guiding star idea that I came up with. Uh, so if you see one of those, it's got a link to a website resource that you can use. Uh, and if for some reason um, the slide goes by too quickly or you want more information, you're also welcome to shoot me an email or give me a call and I can connect you with those resources and I'll have my contact info at the end. So to start off with, uh, Button Up Vermont uh, even though I work for Efficiency Vermont, uh, it's not an Efficiency Vermont program. It's actually a third-party brand uh, with a whole host of fabulous community partners. Uh, so our community partners, you've got some of them listed up here, uh, but it, it's not limited even to this group of folks. So I like to think that Button Up Vermont is a campaign similar to Green Up Day. Uh, so it's gone through a few different evolutions, but the, my guiding principle is we green up in the spring and clean up our communities and we button up in the fall to keep our communities warm uh, and lower and to lower our energy usage generally. So all of these partners are part of that mission. Um, it's not just one group leading the charge. And shout out to VCAN for being our webinar host today. <laughs> Um, so, yep, this is me. If you haven't met me in person, I'm the blonde gal who uh, you may have seen uh, in the State House or you may have seen uh, with my former role at Sun Common. So, it's nice to meet you if you haven't already met me. So, let's just start off with what are my goals uh, for Button Up and how does that look uh, for communities? So, I just wanted to outline it really quickly with simple, easy, and fun. So those are the goals for Button Up 2019. For simplicity, uh, we want to have clear asks for our external and community partners, so that's you. We want to make sure you know what we're asking of you to be a part of the campaign. We want you to know what the deadlines, what the outcomes are. We want that clearly laid out so there's not any ambiguity on when are we stopping, what are we starting. Um, so that simplicity piece, I'd love to be held to that. If you find that there's something that isn't simple uh, to understand happening with Button Up this year, I want to hear about it and I'd love feedback. Um, the second piece is easy. I think in the past we've had Button Ups where um, there might have been a higher barrier to entry. So it's a little harder for communities to participate because we are asking for volunteer time. And if you don't have a good base of volunteers or your volunteers have been stretched thin doing other projects, it can be tough. Um, it, it can be a hard thing to accomplish. So we're trying to make it easier this year. Uh, we want there to be um, uh, an easier process for becoming a community uh, that's participating in Button Up. Uh, we also want it to be easy for the folks who you work with, the people in your community. We want it to be easy for them to actually participate themselves on an individual level. Kind of laid that out a little bit. Uh, I'll talk more about the free 500 um, home energy visits in a moment, but that's a capstone to that concept. Uh, the other, the last one is fun, <laughs> which um, I think when we think about weatherizing our homes, we might not think of fun, um, at least not the idea of getting up in your attic and adding insulation. Not a lot of fun there, um, but we want to make it fun this year. So engaging materials, you'll see uh, both through social media and in some of the materials we have, we are trying to have um, more of a fun, playful, joyful experience um, with what we're offering folks. Um, I was showing Ian before, we've got a great postcard, which you'll have access to, which features a delicious looking cider donut. So if that's not fun, I don't know what is. Um, uh, so the other side of things is uh, we've had button up going on for a number of years, and I think my goal for this year is to really celebrate and appreciate the volunteers who have made this work happen. Uh, so being able to spend time to um, thank many of you who I saw already on the attendees list who have participated in the past um, for all the hard work you've done, and then to also celebrate anyone who's joining us this year. 
So that's the goals. And let me click back in so I can, there we go. Uh, so some of the lessons learned from previous years. Uh, in 2018, I think we saw uh, some button up fatigue setting in. That's my terminology for volunteer burnout. Uh, there was some difficulty with the time between signups, uh, folks getting their contractor walkthroughs, um, and then the process uh, to engaging folks to a finished project. Uh, so those, so I'll just start up by saying what's different about 2018 and 2019 in those two areas. The first is we're moving away from the uh, champions versus heroes concept. So if last year you were a champion community or a hero community, um, we're not creating those two different tiers of community engagement. Uh, additionally, uh, since we're doing the walkthroughs themselves, Efficiency Vermont will be doing the 500 free home energy visits uh, rather than having it uh, be a contractor partner uh, doing the walkthroughs. Uh, that is going to make it a lot simpler uh, for us to collect both data uh, on how many walkthroughs are being done and it doesn't have the follow-up requirements uh, that I think um, did create some of the button-up fatigue from last year. Uh, additionally, you can see um, with the contractor partners, um, what we heard pretty loud and clear from feedback last year was when folks signed up to do a, a home energy visit with a contractor, we're kind of do two different buckets of people. There were folks who in your community were jazzed and ready to jump in and do a project. And then there were folks who, hey, it's a free contractor visit. I'm just gonna kind of kick the tires on if this is the right next step for me. Uh, and that led to, I think, a bit of tension with the contractors who their end goal is they wanna finish a home energy project with a homeowner. If they don't feel like the visit itself is productive, it feels like it's not the best use of their time. So since Efficiency Vermont is taking over that, we're trying to maximize our contractor partner's time um, by giving them, after the walkthrough, the hot leads, the folks who are ready to jump in and do a project. And I can talk more about that later on. I think that's a place that we'll, we'll have some questions on. Uh, the last piece is, uh, <laughs> I can't ask you for a show of hands, but if there are folks who have a uh, uh, weather stripping left in their car, uh, <laughs> you're not alone. Uh, I, I heard pretty loud and clear through some of the surveys um, that some of the freebie giveaways like weather stripping didn't really seem like a totally great value add to um, the different activities towns were doing. So we're focusing on really valuable um, uh, items. And the giveaway that we're making available this year is a $200 coupon when an individual signs up for a free home energy visit. That $200 coupon can be used for an Energy Star appliance. So that's a pretty good chunk of money to help folks move towards um, an energy efficient appliance. Oh, I got to click in, sorry. Okay, so with all that said, how do we count towns as participating communities? What do you have to do uh, to be a participating community? Thinking about the ease, the simplicity, and the fun goals that we have. The first way that you can participate as a community is to host a step up to button up workshop. I love that title. I can't claim that I came up with it, but I think it's fabulous. Uh, the idea behind the step up to button up workshop is a town can pick uh, a location, a date and a time, and we'll work to have a energy consultant, an expert in their field, come and do a step up to button up presentation. My thought was this, it's easy uh, for you to uh, find a good location, uh, and then we can provide the backup support with the person who's the energy consultant leading the PowerPoint, um, as well as the marketing um, and some of the efforts behind that. Uh, the other piece I'll note with the step up to button up workshops are that if you've attended an Efficiency Vermont workshop before, uh, we gotta love them, our engineers, 
they are wordy. They want to give you the details, and I love that. Um, what we're doing this year with this workshop is a bit different. We're having a short presentation, the goal being 15, 20 minutes long. Uh, that presentation is a good primer, and then the rest of the meeting, the rest of the workshop, that's going to be question and answer. My hope being that that will give folks at all the different levels of weatherization projects, whether it's your person who's who's never used uh, any kind of uh, weather stripping before to your uh, DIY master. Uh, each of those participants can get the primer with that short 20 minute presentation and then be open to asking questions of the expert in the field. Um, I'll also note I've had some questions already with the workshops. Uh, can we have other part partners participate uh, in our Step Up to Button Up workshop? And the answer is heck yeah. If you've got an organization like NeighborWorks or Capstone or um, a local group that you think should also be involved, I'd love to coordinate that. I think the more the merrier. Um, it's just about getting that information to folks. Okay, so the next way that you can participate uh, is by doing a home tour. Uh, there are some fabulous projects that have been done with Button Up in the past where homeowners have done fully complete weatherization projects uh, that we want to celebrate. So if you've got a community where you've done Button Up multiple years or you know of folks who have weatherized their homes in your community, this is a great opportunity to reach out to them and say, people in our town want to know what it means to weatherize their homes. Um, doing an open house where that individual can highlight some of the projects they've done in a hands-on way, that's, in my view, the best of the best. It means that a, a community member can go have some cheese, have some juice, go uh, explore a weatherization project, and, and kind of have that neighborly grassroots sense of they did it, I can do it too. I'm excited most about the home tours because I think it's a little bit of a twist on what we've done in the past and it also loops back into that fun goal <laughs> of uh, celebrating uh, communities that we uh, have seen be successful in the past. I'll note it doesn't have to be a project that was a part of a weatherize or button up campaign. It can be someone who uh, has just weatherized separately from um, any kind of campaign like that. So I'm most excited this year with button up uh, when it comes to the incentives. And I can spend more time on this slide if folks have more questions. But when I think about button up and the offer of becoming a participating button up community, I think the most compelling reason to be a button up town this year is that you have the backing of a whole host of partners to get the word out about these incentives. So this year, uh, the incentives, uh, you can see it's broken out in moderate income and higher income. If you want information about what those um, income limits are, uh, it is on this link right here. Um, it's county by county. Uh, so the first incentive for moderate, low to moderate income Vermonters, up to 50% of the project costs, up to $4,000. Higher income, up same thing, 50% of the project costs, but up to $2,000. The heat saver loan uh, is really the, I think the kind of the bow on top of everything, which is if you are financing a project, uh, you can get as low as a 0% interest rate for weatherization projects. That means that the turnaround for your savings uh, is much quicker than what we've seen before um, with weatherization projects. It's market rate for higher income, but I would argue that still um, we're seeing some very low interest rates there. There's additional incentives based on the area that you are weatherizing. We have the attic and basement incentives, uh, and that's on top of the 4, 000, up to $4,000. Uh, we also have the CCHP, that acronym stands for cold climate heat pump 
Uh, there's a 500 bonus to weatherize for those who ha uh, have installed a cold climate heat pump. Um, I should also explain the acronym above. Um, the, uh, the acronym under incentive, HP, little w, E, S, is Home Performance with Energy Star. So uh, don't ask me why <laughs> we have so many acronyms. I'm learning on the job. <laughs> uh, then the weatherization bundle. There's also some additional incentives uh, for individuals who bundle all of that together. So as you can see from this slide, the incentives are fabulous uh, for this year. And I think about Button Up as the way for communities to leverage just how great it is to weatherize your home this year based on the savings that are available. Cool. Um, so what are we asking community participants to do? Uh, we'd like you to decide if you'd like to host a workshop. Uh, I think about the next bullet, signing up one to three homeowners who have completed a weatherization project to do a home tour. I'm thinking about the number range based on the size of your population. You know, when I think about small communities, if you were able to get one homeowner, that's fabulous. Uh, and if you did a workshop on top of that, even better. I will note, I've already had folks say, I live in a community where nobody is going to want to open up their home. And that's totally fine. If you don't think that you're the type of town where people want to invite their neighbors over to come into their home, that's fine. Um, but uh, if you are a town or you have members of your community who like to host, um, this is a great option. Uh, we're asking you to drive attendance and recruit for the events. You know your towns better than anybody else. So being able to get butts in seats uh, is the job that we're asking you to do. Uh, the other, the final thing that we're asking community participants to do is to sign up residents for the free home energy walkthroughs. I've hinted at them so far throughout the PowerPoint, but the free home energy walkthroughs uh, are being performed by energy consultants at Efficiency Vermont, and we have 500 available statewide. Um, I don't think the goal necessarily is to hit that 500 mark. My goal is to get as much participation as possible, but uh, it's not as if your town needs to hit a quota of free home energy walkthroughs. Uh, here are the perks of being a button-up town. Only participating communities have access to the free home energy visits. Uh, we'll have resources to spread the word about the weatherization incentives. Uh, that includes marketing, social media, newspaper advertisements. We've talked about radio ads, all that good stuff. Uh, a little different than last year, this year at the workshops or home tours that you host, we can have a self-scheduling tool available at those events. So that means when you have a community member who comes to a home tour, rather than just signing them up, generally I'm interested in a visit, they can actually sign up for a date and a time with a specific person to have a free home energy walkthrough. I think that's pretty cool. All the follow-up work, that's through Efficiency Vermont. So instead of the process of last year where we were asking towns to follow up with community members who had not gone a walk through or were later in the process, we're going to do that follow-up for you. Uh, the last thing uh, is a $50 gift card uh, towards a local grocery store or retailer to actually uh, help pay for the food costs. So. I know a few of the folks participating today are also participating in a program called Window Dressers. I think there's some exciting information that's going to be coming soon around a collaboration between Window Dressers and Button Up Vermont. Um, I can't confirm anything yet, but if you are participating in Window Dressers as a community, if you know what I'm talking about, uh, I think that we can safely say that we would consider window dressers to be a participating or a qualified um, activity to consider you as a button-up uh, Vermont participating town. So rather than those two things being in conflict, I actually think that we've got a fabulous opportunity to work together. I can't confirm anything just yet, but uh, exciting stuff is coming. 
Uh, also wanted to just highlight uh, regional planning commissions. And I only have a few more slides, so I'll try to get through these so we can get to questions. Um, regional planning commissions. Uh, they are a great opportunity. There's a great opportunity to utilize your planning commissions uh, this year with button up. Uh, I could see this if you're a small town and you want to work with another community next door. Uh, that's a great way to utilize the planning commissions. Additionally, there's some special events we could see happening. Um, and then the piece that everyone should know about is since we're not doing the regional uh, like kickoff meetings, your regional planning commission is going to be the hub for materials that you need. Um, and that's where you're going to pick that stuff up. So they're going to be the host of those. Okay, timeline, you did it, you came to the webinar, check that box. If you haven't signed up yet to be a participating community, we've got until September 17th, that's the deadline. Uh, on Tuesday, October 2nd, we're gonna do a Celebrate Button Up event. Rather than doing a kickoff starting the campaign event, this is going to be a press event happening at Montpelier um, that will We'll be inviting you to if you're a participating community. We'll be inviting past participants. And it's a way to say, this campaign is underway. Let's celebrate the fact that Vermonters are getting out there and weatherizing their homes. Uh, and then the end date, uh, this campaign is running from mid-September until the end of November. Cool, so this slide I can delve into more, but the basic gist is that uh, each community within your region, so your county, uh, we are trying to logistically schedule our energy consultants so that we can maximize visits. So those free home energy visits, we're trying to maximize where they are um, to provide, based on the feedback we heard last year, um, quick responses and um, to, to get free home energy visits. So this is a complicated graph to show you that if you live in Chittenden County, this is broken out regionally, you have free home energy visits available for folks to sign up for between any of these dates, oops, oops, um, between any of these dates. Uh, if you are in Caledonia or Essex, your the visit period where folks can sign up and someone will actually come out is between September 30th and November 1st. Rutland, you're in the same boat. Uh, if you're in Grand Isle or Franklin, visits will be scheduled for your community members between November 4th and December 6th. That includes Lamoille, Orleans, Orange, Bennington, and Wyndham for that second group. Uh, and then the third group of folks are, again, Chittenden, Addison, Washington, and Windsor. So you will have folks who will be able to sign up for a visit during this period of time. So the idea here is that if you have an event uh, for, you know, Windsor and Washington and Addison, you could have an event as late as the you know, end of November, and folks would not be scheduling a visit until December 9th or January 24th. Um, if you are in Rutland, it's fabulous if you can schedule an event before September 30th um, or at least mid-October so folks can get those visits before November 1st um, hits. Um, the thing I want to just communicate on this slide is we're trying to time it. If for some reason this does not work for your region, if you are in Lamoille and you know you're not gonna do an event um, until late November, that's fine. Um, we can work with you. This is just a general guideline for what we'd like to see timing-wise to um, efficiently schedule our energy consultants. Cool, so this is what we want you to do now. Go to buttonupvermont.org, sign up to be a community partner if you haven't already. Uh, I'll reach out and we can pick a date, time, and location for your step up to button up workshop. Start hitting the pavement, finding those homeowners, uh, and then we can fill out the event details. Uh, and then last but not least, get folks to show up to your event. So that's everything and I'm open for questions. <laughs> so I don't know if I pass this back off to you, Ian. So 
You are okay. in good shape here, Becca. Woo! Thank you so okay. much uh, for that presentation. And thanks to all of you who've been typing your questions in. Uh, please continue to do so. We'll go over them. Um, I also know that we've got a couple folks on the phone who might not be able to access this question bar. Um, so if, if you're on the phone and have a question for us today, um, please feel free to email it to ihitchcock at vnrc.org. I'll uh, keep my email open so that I can see any questions on the phone for folks who might not be able to type into that question bar. Um, so some of the initial questions we've got, Becca, are, um, can you go over again what kinds of workshops will be available? Okay, let me click back. Oops. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, so the kinds of workshops that will be available, uh, it's really one primer step up to button up workshop. Uh, the idea is that if you have an energy consultant come, they'll do that short 20 minute presentation and then open it up to questions. If you're a community that has done, you know, the step up to button up, if that workshop sounds like you've done it 10 times in your town, um, let me know because we can work through making the event special. Um, but I wanted to make sure that this was an easy kind of copy and paste um, workshop that any community could utilize. Great, thank you. Um, another question here. Will this year's button up be conducted entirely by local volunteers or are there other pieces to button up? Oh, what a good question. Uh, let me see. Yeah, so I'll, I'll stay on this slide. Um, we are of course asking for local community volunteers um, to be a big part of this, but I really, really get that question because I think in the past we've asked our volunteers to do what might have been more professional work, um, you know, following up with people, um, being kind of the go-to person for logistics, for planning an event. Um, I wanted to remove that barrier for communities and make it as simple and easy as possible to put on um, a really worthwhile event for your community. So we're not relying exclusively on volunteers. Um, I'm gonna be the person in able to help you um, set up an event. And then we've got um, an organization called Tamarack Media who will be doing the social media posting, who will be adding things to the newspaper for you, who could coordinate um, radio ads potentially, which that could be interesting. Um, and kind of doing that marketing side of things. So we're not asking volunteers to do that, except, and I think this is the key piece, um, is you, again, know your community best. So if you've got, you know, I think about my hometown um, in Hartford, Vermont, we have a fabulous community listserv. I don't know if it makes sense for uh, a button up partner to post in the community listserv, but I do know it makes sense to have an individual community member say, come on out to this workshop or come on out to this home tour and, and add that to their listserv. So we've got some, kind of boilerplate language that we can pass on to you as you promote these events in your own community. The other piece I'll mention is we've got the home energy visits being um, performed or being done by our energy consultants. So we're not asking you to go out and find contractors um, or uh, people to do you know, home performance walkthroughs. That's something that staff are doing. And then the follow-up with those individual homeowners to get them on moving along the process of completing a project, that follow-up is also being done by staff uh, at Efficiency Vermont. Yeah, great question. Yeah, I think that's a, a really important point to, to highlight, Becca, is that kind of in response to the experience of last year's button up, kind of the, the number of walkthroughs is being limited so that it can be, yeah. you know, more manageable and that the uh, response between someone signing up for a visit and, and the visit happening and potentially and hopefully weatherization work being done um, is, is smoother than it has been in times past. Um, yeah. Another thing I'll note. Yeah on your point about ways of getting the word out about things like these community events or the home tours is that another great way that local energy committees and local residents could help promote the word is by posting in front porch forum kind mm. of in their communities as kind of statewide organizations we, we don't always have access to 
front porch forums from a particular town. Um, but those of you on this webinar as kind of residents of your town do have access to front porch forum and can submit postings there. So that would be another great avenue to kind of use the language provided um, to help promote events. That's a, I really like that you highlighted that, Ian, because I think there's something special about uh, having someone in your town that you know, like your neighbor posting it, than it is some random person you've never met. So that's where I want to leverage our volunteers is where your skill set is. And that's grassroots knowing your community. The other thing I'll say uh, with the home tours in particular, I haven't mentioned it yet, but we're going to be doing some invitations. I think about it like when you're invited to a birthday party and you get like the card in the mail. <laughs> We're going to be doing fun stuff like that to invite community members out to these events. Another question, does Efficiency Vermont have a list of homes in my town that have been weatherized? Um, I know this particular question is coming from Williston, but I think it it does get to a broader question of, you know, if a, a community group wanted to hold a home energy tour, you know, how would they go about trying to identify homes that might be good to feature? This is this is a great question because I did not know the answer to this question and it took a little bit to get an answer to this question. So last year, because of signing the memorandums of understanding and some of the partnership with contractors, we were able to get info uh, on the Efficiency Vermont site about folks who have completed weatherization projects. I want to be really clear at this point, which is Efficiency Vermont protects its uh, customer data. I mean, it's exceptionally important to us that we respect the privacy of um, customers. So unless we have a signed, um, basically a, a signed agreement saying we can share information about a homeowner, uh, we we can't. So unless someone has signed something saying we can share their information, we cannot share that information. But what I learned out of this conversation after going back to folks in Efficiency Vermont saying, what can we provide to towns? If you want to know um, folks in your community who have completed weatherization projects, if we have individuals who have signed a document or confirmed with us that we can share their information, we can give that information to you. The one caveat I'll give uh, is not, it might, you might have no one in your town who's actually agreed to that. Um, but I do know that we, in most communities, we do have um, folks who have agreed in some way to say, yes, you can share the fact that I've weatherized and my contact information um, in a broader way. So long, long story short, uh, yes, we can provide you with information, but only in the instance where a homeowner has agreed that we can do that. And that might not be a big number of people. Not, not to keep kind of hitting on Front Porch Forum, but it strikes me that one <laughs> way of, of getting at this information might be you know, just putting out an introductory posting, you know, letting folks know that you'd like to highlight weatherization tours and asking if anyone would be interested or open to Kind of showcasing the work they've done that if there are kind of avenues of doing that in your community via you know front porch forum or kind of word of mouth relationships or kind of relationships with local contractors um, that might be a way of of trying to find those people um, as you if you're thinking about hosting home tours yeah that's a great point and and i would even say um that that might even be a superior way of getting folks versus saying like hey efficiency vermont told us you did a project um being able to go, oh, I remember so and so last year bragging about how great, <laughs> how comfortable they are now. <laughs> that might be your your advocate that you want to reach out to. <laughs> A question here: Can you go over again who that fifty dollars food coupon is an incentive for? Ah, uh, yes. I'm so glad people are interested in this fifty dollars coupon. Um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, no, I got to go back. Sorry, I'm scrolling so much, folks. Can't... No, I missed it again. Sorry. I'm going to go slower. What are we asking? Perks. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'll get to it. And <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Ian. Um, so what a good question. Um, last year, uh, if you experienced this, it was a little willy-nilly on who was paying for food costs. Uh, 
it is a complicated process for Efficiency Vermont to directly reimburse a community. Basically, we need your like W-9. Um, we need all sorts of information to make sure that we're getting, um, that, that we're verifying costs. So to get a little bit around that, to make it easier for communities, we are offering to call in or you know order a $50 gift card to a local grocery store retailer. That way at the end of the campaign, we don't need to collect all of the different communities receipts and verify like did you buy the right stuff um instead it's kind of a carte blanche you have 50 dollars to spend at a local place and we would love for you to tell us who you want the gift card to go to um and ideally it's you know, i think about it um i love local if you've got a local group uh local grocery store or a co-op, I would recommend putting your dollars towards that kind of organization. But, but we'll, uh, I think it is a pretty open case to be made for almost any grocery store. Um, we just want it to be easy for you. And I, I think in general, part of where the thinking behind this $50 gift card is that, you know, for, for evening events around dinner time, you know, it, it's often a really helpful draw to get folks to come if you're providing food at that event. Um, I know I certainly like having something to eat when I'm going around the state heading to evening <laughs> meetings. And so we, you know, we just found from our experience in, in this realm that, that that's something that is just a really helpful kind of extra piece for an evening event and efficiency Vermont stepping up to make sure that local community groups have the resources they need to, to provide food at something like a, like an evening workshop or a home energy tool. Oh, business. yeah. Um, Becca, oh, definitely. This and if for some, oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, ask your question. Sorry. I was just going to ask um, if communities are doing, let's say, a um, button up workshop and a home energy tour, um, would this gift card be something that would go toward kind of food for both events? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I believe it's per event. So, okay. yes, if you were doing a, um, if you know if you're doing a home tour and you were doing a workshop that would be fifty dollars per event but don't hold me to that i need to go back and confirm um uh, the other point i wanted to make and i think you were getting at it ian which is food is a draw for people and <laughs> if you want to be creative and do your events at a coffee shop or um you know you want to have something that's above and beyond fifty dollars um, if you want to do like a potluck, those are totally, that, that's an option you can pick. We're trying to make it simple with the $50 towards um, a local retailer. If you've got a pizza place and you want to put it towards that, um, definitely let me know um, because if it's a, a restaurant or something specific like that, we can, we can see what we can do. Becca, will there be any follow up with folks from last year's button up campaign who may have kind of signed up for contractor visits, um, but haven't those haven't yet materialized kind of is, is there any kind of follow up from lingering threads from last year's campaign? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, yes and no, because when a it, it depends on how the contractor who who signed up uh, the, so I'll start by saying, if you didn't get a home energy visit and you signed up with a contractor that allowed Efficiency Vermont to do the follow-up, you've already been, as an individual, being reached out to. If you signed up for a free home energy visit, whether you completed it last year or didn't, it is dependent on if the contractor wanted to be the only individual or the only group doing up. So if there, if you have communities, like I know of a few communities where they've had two contractors and one contractor said, go ahead, Efficiency Vermont, you do the follow-up. And the other contractor said, you know what, we want to hold on to that relationship. We'll do the follow-up. Um, if it's, if you have a community that has had Efficiency Vermont be allowed to do the follow-up, they are being reached out to um, and they have been reached out to. Yeah, and they we can certainly work on that with the town um, to reach back and 
invite people to participate again this year if they had had a visit or if they didn't get that far. Okay. If people don't, <clears throat> excuse me, if people don't have a, a basement or attic, can the, the relevant added incentives um, for be used for things like foundation and upper house air leaks, stuff, stuff like beams and windows? Mm. Oh, you're saying if you don't have a foundation. Mm. Wow, that's, you stumped me. I do not have an answer for that one. Um, let me, um, yeah, let me follow up. Uh, because I do, if you don't have an attic or a basement, what can you use for? Okay, yeah, I don't have an answer, but uh, I we'll, can follow up. We'll try to follow up and get back to that one. Um, and I would recommend, actually, let me go back to the slide. It, it might even be, you might be able to find that information here on the Efficiency Vermont webpage. Um, but if, if you're looking through and you're just not finding it, yeah, let's connect. Got another question here for some folks from Stowe saying that their their Stowe event is on October 24th, um, but the the sign up window for the contractor visits for the area begins October 1st. Um, they're not sure that folks will notice sign up until the October 24th event. So how can you help the community find out about the sign up period? So I think that gets just to the question of that you were talking a little bit toward the end of the presentation as to how yeah. um, kind of the way that the regional timing works um, and how yep. and if community should be conveying that. Yep. Okay. So Stowe is in Washington County. Is that correct? I believe My so. Rock. Okay. Sorry, Stowe. Hopefully, uh, Captain, <laughs> let us know if we are, but I think so. <laughs> okay. So your event is on October 24th. That's perfect because Washington County folks will start having the availability uh, for Washington County visits on December 9th. So that means on your event on October 24th, folks can can click, have that self-scheduling tool when they go to the event and they can pick a date for a visit with an energy consultant for a time between December 9th and January 24th. So you timed it perfectly. Um, if for some reason you had chosen, let's say you aren't a stow and it's not timed perfectly, let's say you and it looks like, sorry to interrupt you, Becca, it looks like Stowe's in Lamoille. Thanks, Kathy. Oh, God. <laughs> sorry, Stowe. <laughs> I apologize. I should know my state better. Um, it's similar. You've got um, November 4th to December 26th is the visit window. So doing an October 24th event is, is still well-timed. Yeah. But let's say you were, I think the group of folks that um, will have the potentially the toughest time trying to schedule early um, is Caledonia and Essex and Rutland County. So if you're in any of those three towns, your visit window is September 30th through November 1st. So the, the problem would be if you scheduled an event for November 2nd. But I'll ca do, so let me caveat that by saying, if for some reason that is your situation, we can talk through um, how we can make that work. This is a logistical guideline. It's not, um, it's really meant to get at that question of the time between when someone signs up saying they want a free home energy visit and when they actually get that visit. And I, just to add on to that, Becca, I think the, the reason for the, the regional timing, this is kind of more of a, a back end behind the curtain sort of thing. It, it really yeah. is designed just to make sure that the, Efficiency Vermont uh, contractors who are going to be doing the walkthroughs uh, know when they're going to be doing it so that they don't all get kind of swamped at a particular time and that we can kind of spread that work out across the state. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, Ian. And what's really cool about the energy consultants we have on staff is they're not all in Burlington. We've got energy consultants throughout the entire state. So this is also taking into account um, prioritizing folks who live near you and their schedule um, and how that works. So I think the bottom line is don't be kind of afraid or, or, or scared if the window for your region doesn't look like it'll line up when you can host an event. Um, just be in contact with Becca and uh, work through those issues. Exactly, Ian. Exactly. Can, another question here, can we speak to strategies to sign up low-income rural folks? 
Oh gosh, yes, we definitely can talk about that. That is a that is like the question I think of um, on anyone's mind who is thinking about weatherization. And I'm going to go back to the incentives piece. Um, so because the low to moderate income incentive is up to four thousand um, dollars, the average weatherization project, the majority of them, just about sixty five percent, are eight thousand dollars or less. So that means for someone who is low to moderate income, they're going to be able to get half of that project covered, and then they have the potential to get that 0% weatherization project um, heat saver loan. Uh, I'll just give a shout out to that strategy piece with um, towns like Rygate, for example. Rygate um, is trying to work with an organization in their community to attend the Step Up to Button Up event that is focused directly on low-income um, Vermonters uh, in doing projects. Um, so if you have an organization in your community that speaks to that audience or works with that audience and you would like to have them participate in a workshop or even be the location that you host the workshop, um, that I think could be a good strategy. The other strategy I could see, and I think about this a lot, um, if you couldn't tell from my photo, I'm uh, under the age of uh, 50, <laughs> I'm 25. <laughs> um, and a lot of my friends and neighbors have children. So when I think about a strategy for low to moderate income um, participation in events, it's having um, childcare that's available, um, it's that food piece, if it can be around a time where, hey, I don't need to think about dinner because guess what? It's there. Um, those kinds of strategies, I think, are, are more effective. Um, but it, there's no easy way, I think, to reach low-income Vermonters unless you're going to them because it is a the priorities are a the flexibility of schedule is 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 difficult. Um, so a typical Wednesday night 7 p.m. meeting might not work. Um, I even think about this webinar. I love that we can do this during lunchtime because that means folks who are working full time have access to it um, during their work. Um, work day. So strategies around making it a flexible event, timing wise, thinking about that, coordinating with low income Vermont support, par supportive partners, um, providing food. Um, if you do have an organization that can offer child care during the event, that's a big pro. Um, and I can actually connect folks if this is a concern of yours or something you really want to focus on. Um, the Vermont Council on Rural Development uh, is one of our partner organizations, same with groups like Capstone, and I can help connect you with them to see if there are strategies that they would recommend um, or resources they can offer. Becca, can I have you navigate back to the incentive slide for one mm. quick point? Um, just one thing I wanted to, to highlight for folks as we're thinking about kind of accessibility of weatherization services generally. Um, I just I want to make sure that that everyone on the webinar understands that kind of you know incentive forms can kind of make some people's eyes glaze over. Um, but Efficiency <laughs> Vermont really has stepped up in a big way and put um, funding toward making weatherization projects much more affordable than they might otherwise be. Um, but Becca, correct me if I'm wrong. These incentives won't be available forever. Yeah, that's yeah, Ian, you're spot on. There is a lot of urgency with these incentives and. Um, in my other life, uh, I serve as a state representative, and this incentive funding comes directly from uh, money appropriated by the state. And we've got a short window of time to actually utilize these incentives, and there is a potential that they won't be, and I know there's another state rep on the call, so uh, <laughs> you might agree with me on this. Um, there is not a guarantee that this funding will be extended into the future. So we've got a short window of time um, with some big goals on um, getting folks to weatherize this year. And uh, just to, to add to that, I think, you know, one of the things that I think of when I hear that is that, you know, there, in terms of time to actually commit to, to doing projects, there, there really has never been a better time in Vermont 
um, with the resources that are kind of newly available and available for a limited time only to actually do weatherization work. Um, so, so just kind of making sure that that message is getting out to communities loud and clear is, I think, one of the, the clear goals of the Button Up program this year. Um, and there will be resources provided to communities to help kind of explain the incentives and, and how people access them. Um, if and when, as we hope they do, they, they move from kind of learning about what they can do to actually going forward with the projects. Um, now we've got only a few minutes left and a lot of questions yeah. to go through yet, so I'm going to try to move us along <laughs> a little fire. bit. Um, <laughs> The slideshow will be available. Um, I will, when I send a follow-up email with the recording of this webinar, I'll also make sure the slideshow is there. Um, we talked about town with low income help. Um, is there an equivalent campaign for commercial buildings? Can landlords of multi-unit oh. buildings sign up for consultant visits, for instance? Oh gosh, what a fabulous question. Um, so there is not an equivalent program like Button Up, but uh, Efficiency Vermont, separate from Button Up, we have a multifamily program that, that provides some, that we're really trying to meet our multifamily homeowners um, where they're at, to be able to offer walkthroughs to them, offer incentives. Um, and we have a great web page for that. I would direct folks, I wonder if I can even, if I click on this, will I totally throw us off? Um, but there are some great uh, services when it comes to being a multifamily homeowner, um, as well as um, commercial. I probably won't be able to find it if I scroll through now. But um, yeah, so there's, there's some incentives. Uh, what I think is really cool about um, some of the incentives that we're offering for multifamily. Oh, here we go. I found it. Um, is that there's special resources being allocated to multifamily homeowners. Um, so if you've got a landlord or a renter who wants to participate, they want to have a more comfortable home, they want to take advantage of the incentives, I would recommend you just have them call Efficiency Vermont, have them fill out a contact form, um, and we can actually help them separate. There's not an ongoing campaign, but there is some targeted work being done towards that community um, commercial like small business um, there's a, there's some services available for that category of um, business as well and again um, we can efficiency Vermont can connect you with that info but yeah no no campaign unfortunately but in, in the follow-up email I will um, include a link to this this piece on the efficiency Vermont page so folks can easily find it um, as they're following up can a town in the last time period, Becca, um, for walkthroughs, let people know about the program well in advance of that? Um, could people sign up for their December or January visits before the November sign up date? Oh, great question. Yeah, I, I would say that when you see the second column down, the sign up window dates, um, I think the idea there is if you were in Washington, if you're in Addison, Washington, Windsor, if you did an event between November 1st and November 30th, that would be fabulous. If you didn't, if you did an event, but you know, any time before that, people would still be able to access the self-scheduling tool. They'd still be able to sign up for a visit. You can still let them know about signing up for a visit. It's just ideally, if you were to put on an event, it would be during that time period. Um, yeah. Following up on an earlier question, uh, can you tell towns or communities how many households in the community of Weatherize without giving out individual information about which households have done so? Oh, that's a, I like that. Um, yes, we can give aggregated data. Uh, the rule of, the rule on that is if you, I'll just, I'll give an example. If you're very, if you're Plymouth, Vermont, and four people have weatherized, uh, for, this is just hypothetical, uh, and we can, and it, it is almost such a small subset of data that you could tell it was Joe Smith who is one of the four, <laughs> um, we won't be able to share that data. If you're a community where there is a good number of folks and you wouldn't be able to pinpoint individuals, we can provide how many folks have weatherized in your community, how many people have participated. Uh, and I've been remiss, I haven't mentioned this yet, but we're providing a webinar, or webinar, <laughs> we're doing a newsletter 
uh, that is going to be available to all participants of Button Up, both towns and individuals, that's going to have some great metrics. Uh, one of the pieces going back to that, like, ease of, um, of doing things this year is I wanted it to not be a Norwich versus Hartford or Williston versus Essex, like who's getting the most free home energy visit sign up. That's not what I wanted. Instead, here we're thinking about a um, like what's your best time or what comparatively to 2017 and 2018, how are you doing for free home energy visit signups? How many folks are engaging with weatherization in 2019? Comparing yourself to previous performance. Uh, so in the newsletters, there will be um, information about how, like percentage-wise, um, people are participating in button up in in individual communities. So Becca, we are at one o'clock, but we do have a lot more questions. Um, <laughs> I'm going to make a kind of executive decision to extend this a little bit to try to get. Okay. More. Are you able to stick around a little longer? I am. All right, I hope we won't lose too many participants. Um, but again, the recording will be sent around. So if folks do need to drop off, um, they can still catch any final questions as they go. But we're going to keep on going here. Um, Becca, who would guide a home tour? Would, would an Efficiency Vermont consultant be involved? Yeah, great question. So it can be done in a few ways. I think the ideal situation is if you have um, a homeowner who worked really closely with a contractor last year, I think the ideal situation would be that contractor would come and attend. Um, if that's not possible, we can certainly connect you with an energy consultant uh, or an expert in the field who can come and kind of host that tour with the homeowner. If a community member is interested in Button Up but can't come to a workshop, um, can you still invite them to have a walkthrough? Say that one more time. <laughs> so if, a, if there's someone in a community who might be interested in um, getting a, a walkthrough um, but isn't able to attend kind of a workshop or another um, event, can they still be invited or are the walkthroughs tied to attendance to the workshop? Mm. Does that make sense? No, it does. I understand now. Um, I was thinking home tours still. Uh, yes, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, if you've got a member of your town who says, you know what, I really want to do one of these free home energy visits, but Tuesday night at 7 p.m. for the Step Up the Button Up workshop does not work for me, um, they can still sign up. Um, and we can, um, and there is going to be a section on the Button Up website, ideally for folks to be able to sign up for the free home energy visits. Um, the real question is we want to make sure that this is limited to participating communities uh, who have access to those visits. Um, so we can talk about that later on in the campaign if, as the campaign starts to kick off. If you have folks who aren't able to attend but want a free home energy visit, there will be ways that they can sign up. Are there any instances where Efficiency Vermont would pick up the complete cost for low income weatherization uh, for someone who otherwise couldn't afford to weather us? Um, yeah, or are there good... maybe other organizations that might be able to help there? There are definitely other organizations that can help. Um, going back to this list of folks, I know that there are programs that do cover the cost, that do full like weatherization. Um, low-income projects, um, but I, I, I wouldn't be able to list them off the top of my head. I can see about um, compiling a list. Um, I think if, if you've got someone in your community, like I think about the Upper Valley, Cover is a great organization that does home improvements. Um, there are, you know, you got Capstone, Habitat for Humanity, NEDO, like those kinds of groups, Rural Edge, I don't know what they offer, but there are programs for um, improvement. So there's a few, but I don't know them off the top of my head. <laughs> Sorry. So, Becca, you're referring to kind of the, the state low income weatherization program, um, which is a, a great resource for folks who are in that situation where they might be able to benefit from weatherization, but be unable to afford kind of any costs toward doing that. Um, some of the organizations you mentioned like Capstone are kind of the regional groups who do that. And we can send a link to that resource in the follow up materials as well. Um, from a practical standpoint, one thing I will note is that, um, unfortunately, the 
the demand for those services among people who who would be eligible is is outstripping um, the ability of the current system to supply it. And so there are pretty significant wait times for many regions of the state uh, between when someone signs up for the low income weatherization program and when they actually receive services. Um, we would yeah. still certainly encourage folks to do it, um, but just wanted to make sure the communities are aware of that um, that current challenge at the moment. Um, Ian someone, coming in with the info. Thank you. <laughs> doing, doing my best. That's what we're here for. Um, <laughs> someone uh, was a little bit confused about what window dressers is. Um, I can oh. I can take an initial stab at this. Uh, so Diane, window dressers is a uh, community based campaign. They're they're a nonprofit out of Maine who have been creating um, essentially interior storm window inserts. Basically, they have volunteers build custom uh, interior window insert. So basically some, some pieces, some two by fours with some, some plastic, um, to kind of help reduce the, the thermal loss or the, the air that's lost due to, to windows leaking. Um, and there are a couple of Vermont communities, particularly in the Northeast kingdom, who've been partnering with window dressers to bring those campaigns to their communities. Um, we actually did a webinar about window dressers. I believe it was last month. Um, that I can send you a link to if you're interested in more information. That's not something that's currently available across Vermont, um, but we did want to recognize the communities that are participating in that um, as kind of a, a thermal efficiency improvement, which is some of the whole point of what Button Up is supposed to encourage. Yep. Yep. Another question, can I share the webinar presentation and recording with my town energy committee and select board even when we're planning on scheduling workshops? Absolutely. Um, yeah. that, is the, that is the whole the whole point and hope of um, these presentations is that even for folks who can't attend directly, um, that we can get out useful info going forward. So, uh, Mari, we'll be sending out again in the in probably the next day or so um, a follow up email with that recording as well as compiled resources. So you will have that to share um, widely with whoever many folks you see. Um, and I'm also happy to um, attend a meeting. I know if it was Mari asking the question, I'm working with her to schedule a time um, to come to Bristol or at least a phone call. So if you've got, if, if you think you need a little extra um, explanation for your community stakeholders, I'm happy to um, set up a time to give a more detailed presentation. All right. Thank you guys so much again uh, for attending. Um, Becca, if you wouldn't mind pulling up the last slide with your contact info. Um, oh, again, I'll make sure that Becca's email is, is front and center um, in the follow-up materials. But if you do have any further questions about um, the Button Up Vermont campaign and how to participate, uh, Becca is the person to reach out to. And uh, we'll also make sure to send a link to where you can sign up if you've liked what you've heard and want to be a community partner. Um, to have your community participate in this year's Button Up campaign. So, Becca, thank you again uh, so thank much you. for joining us. Uh, thank you to everyone who stayed a little bit later um, as we went through these questions. And we look forward to working with you as you work with Button Up and other campaigns in your communities. Uh, thanks again for all you do and more soon. Thank you so much, Ian. Thanks all. <laughs>